raised in Hawaii and my father was a competitive surfer. He moved from California when he was 18 to, to come to the, the mecca of surfing, which was Hawaii. Surfing being a Hawaiian sport of kings. I watched my father compete in surf contests and decided at a young age that I didn't want to participate in those kind of events and that I just wanted to make surfing more of an artist session. Got bored with started windsurfing and got excited about riding really big on windsurfers because we had the power. We could just go way out in the ocean and get on these waves really early and put ourselves in a really good position. we had a little revelation we were dragging around behind a boat on swords and a light went off in our head and we thought oh if we can drag ourselves on the waves on surfboards with a boat we could take ourselves on to some real big waves and the one thing we were having with windsurfing was having a sail so getting towed onto a wave was uh, eliminated the sail and still gave you the power so we had the best of both worlds thus was born tow surfing
first few times we were out there, I yanked Laird onto this wave. And this one particular day was really, really big. And, and he's six feet, five inches. He's huge. And this wave made him look like an ant. And I was just shaking my head at what was right behind him. That if he did wipe out or his equipment did falter, he would get eaten alive. And that's when that so-called Jaws, that image Jaws, came in. And I told him, you don't even want to know what was behind you. It was Jaws. It's the most perfect, top to bottom, barreling, deadliest right in the world. And not one other way comes close. in contact with your own spirit through experiencing what the ocean has to offer. I think that's what touches all of us, is that, 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 that very pure and very free conscious feeling of, of flight when you arrive there. You get to the point where you're thinking your way through your movements, you're, and everything is secondary. Your, your body is secondary, your equipment is secondary, you're, you're actually moving on terrain with your mind and it's about as close to flying as you can get I would think and I think there's something in the spirit sense of being able to do that.
Every wave is the most purest form of energy that travels across the world to your particular reef and you're sitting there. And you're one of the purest forms of energy that walk the earth. When those two energies combine, I celebrate that combination. Celebrate that in, in every turn. I celebrate it in every, every breath. When a wave comes, the spray off of it goes two, three hundred feet in the air. And if you keep watching that spray, it transcends into something else. There's hidden things in there. If you see waves like what's out here and you don't believe that there's something greater than we are, then you've got some serious uh, analyzing to do and you should go sit under a big tree for a long period of time. Piahi is, is the father of toe surfing. She's the mom, she's the pop. You find out how good of a surfer you really are when you go to Jaws. There's no shoulder riding at Jaws. It's the pit the whole time. What Laird's doing now at Piahi is just physically the most awesome thing you've ever, ever, ever will witness, especially when you're right there in the water with him, to see how far he goes and how deep he goes and how powerful he is, it's almost as like he's as awesome as the wave. And I just love watching him under stress because he just handles, he trains for it, he eats for it, he does everything for that spot. You leave part of yourself there, and when you see a wave with, with the power and the magnitude of these waves, you realize that lives have been lost there. Achievements of the greatest experiences have been made there, and that brings you a, a certain kind of peacefulness and appreciation and on respect that uh, you don't find it. Each of us alone could have ridden a few graves, but together we have ridden so many of the greatest waves. And that teamwork and that camaraderie and that sharing of the experience is what life's all about. My friends have brought me places that I never thought I could go.
What are you made out of? What challenges you? The spirit form that you are, what challenges you to make decisions, to do things that are beyond you? that day and I made a few takes and I felt my age and I drew my line and said this is not for me so Laird hooked up and he had all this energy and then there was this thing this giant massive round hole that he was able to match and he just happened to be in the right spot on the universe at the right time matching power with power and he's probably the only surfer in the whole world who could have made that wave.
what he did without waving Tahiti is, is like Dave Kalama said, you know, clearly the line has been drawn in the sand. There's only one set of footprints on the side. I think it's important for people to understand that when they see him riding the waves that he rides, that if he falls, he will die. Yeah, this wave that he rode in Tahiti recently, he had no chance of surviving that. I'm, I'm almost positive. I think he would have been vaporized on the reef if he had fallen on that wave. To be there, to feel the energy, to see the naked reef, to see how high the wave was exploding, and to see a human body conformed inside the vortex was just definitely a really hard act to follow. I mean, it drove him to drink it. He, he was on the wagon for six or eight months, and then that day he came along, and I remember he had a beer that night. He cried a whole bunch because we the line. That, that was it. past the level that much, um, your perception of, of critical changes because you've been to such an extreme, but everything behind that doesn't as bad as it used to. And I think he experienced a, you know, physical, emotional, spiritual, in almost every sense, a, a whole new outlook on, on surfing, on life. You can tell something has changed from that experience because the way he approaches the wave now, is uh, it's like he's looking at it through different eyes than the rest of us. Something's going on. I've never seen anybody surf like that. Uh, in my 42 years of surfing, he's to me the best surfer in the world. The only time I've ever seen surfing like that done was in the early 70s when we used to go to surf and see that shit in cartoons. I don't think there's another human being in this world today that can surf like Larry. He's, he's, he's a freak, and uh, it's going to be a long time before anybody can feel those boots. to break the planning barrier and go to the next dimension, which is faster and not being affected by surface conditions and also eliminating having to have the wave actually break. So now you're going to be able to get on things that you wouldn't normally be able to get. And ultimately, the objective is to ride the biggest swells that the ocean can create.
Larry's going to ride a bigger wave than anyone else. I mean, that's what he was born for. That's what his whole life has been geared for. I mean, that's what he's here for. He's the king. <laughs> I've known him since he was just a little f I wanted to drown him. Uh, f he used to, we'd be surfing the pipeline. And back then there was, like where my house was, that he lived. There was a whole grove of coconut trees. They eventually all got washed away. But he'd lurk up there hiding in those trees. And, if you looked up there, you could see him, you know, kind of darting and forth there. Somebody would lose their board, they'd swim in. He'd run in, get them to the beach, drag their board up, bury it in the sand, and run back up the trees, and the guy'd come in. Where's my board? You know, you immediately think that it went out in the rips, and you dive in and swim out. It's not out there. You come back in. Where's my board? You know. If you're lucky, he'd come and tell you where it was. Otherwise, he'd get it at the end of the day if he gave up. Usually you could figure it out because back then there weren't too many footprints on the beach. I look at Laird and I, I, it reminds me a little bit of Waterworld. You know, this guy is, he, he's metamorphosizing into this individual that uh, is so focused on riding big waves that I kind of halfway want to go over and pick up his foot and look on the underneath side to see if he isn't developing suction cups and take a close look behind his ears to see if there isn't gills, you know? It's like this guy is... Uh, you know, he, he, he's, he's, he's taking us to such high bed stage.